Good morning, everyone. It is Friday, the, what is it? The 3rd of May. Um, we thought in May we would talk a little bit around um, the Women at Work research that um, we conducted last year, um, reporting done this year and released in March um, around the timing of International Women's Day. Um, and lots of interesting different, uh, I guess, messages and that came through that research as, um, you know, some good news stories, as well as some interesting contradictions and conflicts as well. Uh, so good morning, Fiona. How are you? Hi, Kate. Good morning. Is that a little bit better? Yes, thanks. Yeah, I'm being that. Um, so we were just saying, I was just saying some of uh, some good news stories coming in here. Mm. I think um, we're going to be talking about different key themes over the course of um, May and Fiona's off to Europe um, towards the end of May. So um, it will be me and we might try and get some guests online as well um, to join me. But I think uh, some really good, you know, a thousand women we talked to in this, in this data set. So a really good cross-section, good cross-section of industries, um, ages. And interestingly, from a demographic point of view, um, we had about which is very um, consistent with the community, a third um, single, a third uh, married or with a partner, and then a third um, with, with children. Um, so it was interesting in terms of, um, I guess, that demographic split. Nothing, no significant differences in terms of those um, demographics, in terms of results, uh, which was also, I think, interesting. We particularly looked at that, that um, demographic split in the bullying and harassment um, data that came through, which, um, you know, was a little bit concerning. I think um, we, Fiona and I, have been having a conversation for a while around what we're anecdotally hearing from uh, women in the workplace, either when we're sitting in uh, focus groups that we run for organisations or when we're talking with clients around things that might be going on. Um, and it's still, it's quite concerning. The data probably verified what we probably already know. Fiona, would you agree? Yes. Yeah, I think, Kate, this is an area where we'd love to think we've made more progress because there's a lot of policies, there's a lot of discussion. However, the as you're saying, the stories we were hearing were very concerning and, and things that I really would have hoped were not happening in you know, 2018, 2019. Um, and then the data really supported that. And it also lines up with the um, you know, Human Rights Commission work that was done last year that came out and it actually showed an increase in sexual harassment from 2012 to 2018. So we know that despite awareness and kind of the knowledge that this is not okay, we're still seeing a lot of it in the workplace, which very much fits with um, this overall notion that we wanted to believe it's better than it is. Do you think this is an interesting one that I've, I was reflecting on um, when we were looking at uh, not so much our results because you know, it was a 2018 data set. We've got nothing to compare it to. But I do wonder um, whether with awareness and obviously Me Too, the Me Too campaigns elevated the conversation, which is awesome. Do you think, like, is it an increase in activity and behaviour or is it actually an increase in association and recognition that actually, oh, goodness, that behaviour equals bullying and harassment, and that's not okay. And it's look, hard to say, I think, probably. Yeah, and I think, look, intuitively, I suspect it's a bit of both. So I think that we do have great awareness. I was actually reflecting on this as we were coming into this conversation today and going, look, when I started in the workplace 25, you know, 30 years ago, you know, it was pretty normal. Like, we actually just thought that's how it was done. And, you know, there was all sorts of sexist remarks and things that were, un, un, you know, inappropriate and you know all the kind of relationships that went on and all sorts of stuff that was really not okay um, and I think some of that stuff has probably improved in a lot yeah. of organizations however um, I think it's interesting that dis despite that knowledge that you know what's not okay and I think you'd be hard pushed to be in most organizations or certainly most larger organizations today and not know what the boundaries are and it still seems to me that there are people who are flaunting that, who are prepared to still do what they've always done or behave in a way that's inappropriate. So, yeah, my, my take is that there's a bit of both, that, yes, we have got to raise consciousness and therefore maybe slightly higher reporting, but we still definitely have an issue because of some of the incidents that we're hearing about specifically. 
Yeah, and look, the data on the sexual harassment, um, I'll read it out, 29% of respondents said they'd been sexually harassed. And we actually explicitly had, for example, unwelcome touching uh, sexually explicit comments and requests that make you feel uncomfortable. So we actually labelled the behaviour so that was no, there was no, I guess, misrepresentation of what sexual harassment uh, means. What was really interesting, because um, one of the things that came to me retrospectively was if we were thinking about, you know, I've got a 20-year career, if we were thinking about, you know, have at any point you been bullying, harassed, if we think about the overall question, well, it's probably likely that at some point you have. Um, and so I think it, it's, um, we're going to narrow the time frame down um, to probably the last three to five years when we do the research again. But when we looked at the data set um, or the response to that particular question around sexual harassment, that's saying 29% um, of respondents had been sexually harassed. When we went and look at the age split of that, 56% um, of the, those respondents were aged 26 to 36. So that's recent, yeah? They're, they're early in their career. They're still yes, in the first, exactly. you know, 10 to 15 years of their careers. So, you know, if... If we're saying this is a reflection of the last decade, um, without a doubt, um, you know, it, it's it's significant. I think anecdotally, um, I would suggest some of the extreme behaviour like you were mentioning and perhaps I saw early in my career, although I was relatively lucky. I don't, um, you know, there's probably only one time when I was involved in a conversation that was way offline um, and I was the only female, I was the youngest at that conversation or at that table, um, didn't feel comfortable to call out the conversation and say this is not okay um, to, for us to be having this dialogue um, at, a, at a table like this, um, nor did any of the other gentlemen who probably had more influence and authority at that table um, do that, which was quite, probably even probably more disappointing, um, I think, when I was sitting there. But I'd say I was probably... Um, on some level been relatively um, insulated or not been exposed to it. What I do think um, where I see quite a lot of significant behaviours is around the making work difficult for me, um, you know, putting blocks in place that make it difficult to build relationships, so really um, passive-aggressive behaviour that's making it difficult for me to do a good job um, particularly if I'm new in a role, making it difficult for me to build... Like, all of those sorts of things. Um, don't f return phone calls, just don't give information that I need in order to help me do my job. Um, a lot of those those sorts of dynamics um, we still see. Uh, I've coached a lot of clients around how to navigate and deal with those. Um, so I think that behaviour, uh, which we know is quite, um, you know, the passive-aggressive or the passive-defensive uh, behaviour in Australian culture is still quite significant. So we do see that and the related behaviours in organisations. And I think that certainly came through the data around the bullying and harassment as well. Yes, yeah. I, I, the other thing I reflect on is, you know, what are the shifts that have happened around calling it out? You know, how easy mm -hmm. is it to call out bullying harassment? And I think this is a really interesting one because um, while on the whole awareness has made it easier for other people to call it out, you know, you were talking about there were people in the room at the time that happened to you who really should have with their position and authority have said, hey, guys, you know, this is just not, not on, not okay. Um, so to some degree, we're seeing more of that, but we're also hearing from some people, and I think this is a reflection of culture, is that if the bullying and harassment is coming from a very senior person, then that mid-manager level that would like to call it out, that actually knows it's not okay, knows you know this is not on, they find it really difficult to call out because it's a career-limiting move because effectively they're calling out someone who's senior to them. And these mm. dynamics are actually something that allows this to keep going and, to, and for more and more of it to be in the organisation. So I think a consciousness around where it's coming from and what's happening and organisations that are actually prepared to look at and listen for some of these things, as you and I find in the focus groups, it's really quite revealing and quite um, useful. And then they can actually make a, a, a choice about, well, what is it we want to do and, and are we going to address this even at our most senior levels? Yeah, and I think one of the, um, and this is for individuals and organisations, you know, one of the opportunities here is how do we give people language um, that makes them feel comfortable to be able to particularly call out these behaviours against the organisation's values. Because then, you know, you, you, can, you can lean on them and say, hey, that's not how we do things around here in the organisation. You know, it's not necessarily um, it's me personally. 
that I think, you know, it's a personal, I don't think that was the right thing to do. It's, you know, if this organisation, um, you know, respect is one of our values and that's really counter to that. Um, and so how do we give people that frame or just simple language that even if it's not done in a group later on, someone can say, hey, 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 Mary or John, because we know it's women as well as men, um, you know, it, next time probably not a good okay, not a good idea um, to perhaps, you know, uh, approach that conversation, that path or, you know, Mary or Jane or might may have misrepresented, um, you know, how that came across. So I think it's how do we help people have those small conversations, particularly when we look at um, the data set around HR and formally reporting it, um, the stories that came through the research around that, um, very few, you know, 20% have ever reported this formally to a manager or HR division. So we know that a lot um, is not necessarily coming up into the formal ranks. What's interesting for organisations then is how are they assessing and diagnosing the level of this behaviour in their organisation? Because if they're just relying on um, what's being formally reported, then it's highly likely that they're missing the real story of what's going on. Uh, so I think as organisations, we need to be able to look at both. We need to go, okay, cool, what's in the formal pathway? Um, and then anecdotally from a culture point of view, what's out there and how do we start to empower people to be able to call out the small behaviours early on so boundaries are set um, that stops often some of, the, you know, this behaviour is really unintentional. Um, yeah. It's not designed to make people feel uncomfortable. Um, and, and so it's to, you know, it's to set some boundaries and say to um, some of these people, it's not okay to go any further. Um, and actually next time don't go that far. Yeah, definitely that self-awareness piece that a whole lot of people, they're not necessarily malicious. They're not necessarily intentionally doing something bad to make you feel uncomfortable. Um, you know, there, obviously there are boundaries to that, but just being aware and going, you know, um, that's, we, we need to have the consciousness around what's okay and what's not, and be able to go as you said, the language early on to just kind of minimise it without making it into a huge drama. I think that's actually one of the things people gave us feedback on. They did, they thought it was too dangerous to make it into a big deal. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Well, um, we won't, didn't set out to start talking about bullying and harassment, but I think it's certainly um, one of the top two uh, revealing pieces that came through the research um, for us. And it was very, I mean, for us, it was good to see the data that was very consistent with the stories we were hearing um, out within organisations. Um, of course, the other big uh, interesting find that came from uh, the data was the gender pay gap. Um, but we will uh, hold that one and talk to you about that next week. Um, if you haven't grabbed, uh, got a copy of this, please, we'll pop the link below. Go ahead and download um, that as well. Um, some really interesting stuff. If you want to talk to us about the results, also, please reach out to either Fiona and I. I'm more than happy to talk about um, and go deeper with some of the um, areas that might be of interest and um, also talk about if it's something you'd like to do in your organisation, we can definitely have a chat with you um, about helping with that as well. So, V, have a great day. Uh, thanks for being you online. Too. And, guys, um, enjoy your Friday and have a great weekend. Bye.